Dilemma 64 presents A Play Toy Land Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show to another Lemon C64 Commodore's Play Guide and Review and in this week's show we'll be checking out Kellogg's Tour produced by CRL and published by them in time for October 1988 Garrett, and he also created most of the music for CRL games, including Jet Boys, which appeared the year before this, in 1987. Unfortunately, I was not able to track down the coder of this game, but we should be taking a look at CRL a little bit later on, but for the moment we can see that this title screen has Kellogg's Tour written all over it, and it has some meaningless top scores unless you want to play this game 10 times in a row and check out how badly you did every time. That's the end of the music and it sounds pretty medieval, but we are going through a war of the roses between Yorkshire and Lancashire and down through Cheshire, skirting around worlds to end up in Bristol and magically appear in London at the end of all that. You can see our controls and you can also see our first stage is Newcastle and it's a short sprint, so let's check out this game and you can see that we are already at the back of the field and we have to catch everybody up and in this game we have to waggle our controller left and right as fast as we can or at least in a good rhythm to stay in front of that pack. From Newcastle, it's Sunderland, Hartlepool, Middlesbrough, Guysborough, Huttonley Hall, Helmsley and finally on to York and that's just 120 miles away. at the very bottom of the screen our current power meter which should ideally always be 100% completely filled up and our speed varies depending on the hill that we're climbing or whether there is any flat parts or whether we can get any speed out of this thing which only tends to occur on the downhill sections and you can see at the end the climb notes our climb of course the ascent or descent and the gear at the very end as well we'll have to change gear sometimes when we get into trouble and of course all the ascents as well In the very centre of the bottom console we can see the stamina and also the food which is also important because if we press that fire button we'll get a stamina injection thanks to some milk and this was sponsored by Kellogg's of course so 
we can't eat cornflakes on a bicycle, but we can drink milk, and if you run out of milk, you'll die, so we have to drink milk. By observing the climb, we can change gear at just the appropriate moment, and by observing the stamina, we can press fire at the appropriate moment, and now that we've run out of food, we have to make it to that line. You can see our position is counting down at the very top corner, and our current time is also ticking down, and there we go, that's the end of the stage, and so on to the next one. At the end of each stage, it will give us our current position, and that's 51 out of 100, so that's not bad. We've overtaken half of the field on one stage. So let's move on to the second stage. Moving on through York and Harrogate, Bolton Abbey, Keithley, Oxholm, Halifax, Holmfirth, and all the rest of them, all the way down to Manchester. And let's cross the Pennines in this game, and let's see how hilly that would be. And ordinarily, the Pennines are quite hilly so this section may be quite treacherous and you, all you have to do is to get into a rhythm in this game you don't have to go full speed but if you are going slow enough with that joystick waggling you can maintain a top speed and hopefully you can beat the TV sprint which will allow us to gain a prize at the very end which is awarded the white jersey for being the fastest sprint time Unfortunately, we don't get the yellow jersey for being in the lead, but apart from those colour changes, we can see that this is a basic bike game where we have to get from A to B, but concentrating on all those dials is important because we'll have to maintain some kind of rhythm, and if you take in too much food too quickly, of course, you'll run out of food and die, and so that's important to remember, of course, when we're riding a bike, we'll always have to take with us a bottle of milk. That is slightly more difficult, we also have the other riders to get around, so we we'll also have to press upwards and downwards to drive around those, as well as holding left and right, which means you'll have to use the diagonals, as well as the fire button, which means you'll have your hands full riding this bike. Back in the day, I did used to love this game and riding out into the countryside and it reminded me of Fox Fights Back and all the games which tried to encourage me to get outside and off the computer. That's the end of stage two of the six stages in Kellogg's tour of the UK, or at least England, and you can see that we have been awarded the white jersey, and we are now in position 35 after battling a guy over the Pennines. And now finally we get to go through Lancashire, and yes, we'll head on over Pendle Hill to Clitheroe by me, and you can see that we got also Newton, Garstang, Preston, Southport, and finally Liverpool, which is another 110 miles away and so we'll have to get our skates on or at least on this case our spokes on our back. The sound effects aren't absolutely imaginary because they simply tick down with our stamina and when that reaches its highest pitch then it's time to press that fire button and that's all you have to do with the stamina. You can see the roadside graphics are for my money a step above the average because they have gone to the lengths of actually building a wall instead of intimating at that with blocks. And yes, these things are only rough estimations, but these aren't character blocks per se, they are actually drawn in. And yes, you can see some repetitiveness going on. But it's a step up from some, and it reminds me a lot of Milk Race. Unfortunately, we will not be reviewing Milk Race on this particular run of the Play Guides, but they are pretty similar games, as you can see. And yes, that's the King of the Mountain, hopefully, because we got over that mountain in a pretty quick time.
You can see we only have a drop of food left, so hopefully that will get us through. And on the Commodore 64 back in the day, I used to love playing this game because it's pretty easy, and most people can get all the way through it as long as they don't blunder over the food. And yes, it's a basic joystick waggler, but when you need a game that you can just complete and feel good for completing the whole thing in first position, then this isn't bad, and it's certainly not as annoying as Cybernoid and things which will kill the player straight away. It it gives the player some outdoor action and some maneuverability and this time it's joystick whaling and in this case we get to see the Albert Dock and Liverpool on our way through to the finish line. That's the end of stage 3 ticked away and our current position is 14th which isn't bad because it gives us a self esteem. And in the next stage we'll be calling it Liverpool, Cheshire, Nantwich, Stoke, Stone and well Stafford Cannock which sounds like it's in Scotland, Brown Hills and Birmingham. And yes that's another 112 miles to go without any music or sound per se and it's just a joystick waggler. So let's get on with it, let's press forward fire and let's get through most of the Midlands. At the end of that stage we are the leader and that means we get to wear the fabled yellow jersey and this time we'll be calling at Birmingham, Stratford-on-Avon, Broadway, Winchcombe, Cheltenham, Stroud, Bath, Wells, Cheddar and Bristol as we continue our tours throughout the lower part of England and on through around Wales because they couldn't get the license permit. And yes, this is the British tour and this is when the Kellogg's tour went around Britain but I haven't seen it much on TV these days. So without further ado, let's press fire and let's get on with it. CRL began as a computer rentals trading company, hence their name Computer Rentals Limited, and they were based in London, and they published a number of games starting in 1982 on the ZX Spectrum, well the ZX-81, and they began on the Commodore 64 in 1983 with their game Handicap Golf. The company was founded by Clement Chambers, who is now a very respectful investment column financial advisor for the BBC and many magazines, including The Guardian, and so Clement Chambers is Mr Money when it comes to this kind of thing. 
Unfortunately, this game has one major problem because you are pressing left and right to change gear. If your controller happens to be in the central position, you're taking some food instead. And let's see if we can spot where I made the mistake on this level, trying to change gear and taking in food instead. And yes, that was the moment that I threw away the entire game simply by taking in food at the wrong time. And so that means that we get to move on to those scores. Ace Magazine gave Kellogg's tour on the Commodore 64 41% in October 1988. And CMVG awarded this a man of 23%. Commodore user awarded it 50% and the current Lemon 64 score is 54% which awards Kellogg's Tour a mega score of 4 out of 10. Apart from the ridiculous control system, which means we can make a mistake right at the end even though we are leading, we can write the entire game off. Apart from that, it's an easy complete sometimes and it requires some concentration. And if you haven't got the skills or the concentration or the arm power to keep up momentum, then that's game over. And your effort will be entirely wasted because that means you'll have to complete the game at the back and you don't get any score for doing that. So that's the end of the game and that's the end of this review of the Commodore 64 version of Kellogg's Tour which I find to be a lot easier than Milk Race because Milk Race is a little bit too difficult for me. I love this back in the day and maybe you have fond memories and I do have fond memories of the title music as well once it gets going. So thank you very much for viewing this guide and review and I hope you can check out this game for yourself. Thank you.